This one building alone has what? two dozen bars, right? back to Journey Across Japan, non-stop north, 2,000 kilometers, 21 days on the road. And this morning, we're in Koryama, the second biggest city in Fukushima. So, beautiful day here. We are continuing our journey across Fukushima. Yesterday, we went to the Fukushima Exclusion Zone, met some amazing people, and kind of caught up on what's been going on there in the four years since my last visit. Obviously, it's not your normal Journey Across Japan episode, but I think it's a really important one, and I strongly recommend you go back and watch it if you didn't see it. Now, we're five days in to Journey Across Japan, I think, I've lost count, and the rickety, tiny K car is holding up nicely. The question is, can it keep going? And speaking of rickety, this morning, Ryotaro is going to be joining us for two days of our journey across Japan. He should be arriving from Koryama Station in just a moment. And here he comes, clutching his rucksack and a coffee. You haven't got me a coffee, have you? No. Oh, how you doing? How you doing, Mike? Long time no see. Long time no see. How you been getting on? I mean, you fucking called me two days ago, telling me to come to Koryama. That's what's <laughs> happening here. We're doing journey across Japan. Again? Again, but this time, no bicycles. That's good news. Smarter. That's really good news. I've got smarter with, so, a, with age. What are we going to be on? We are riding around in a tiny K-car. 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 That Look, sounds worrying. It is a bit worrying. It's not just any K-car, it's a thousand dollar K-car. That makes it worse. It does make it worse. <laughs> I'm digging my own grave here. <laughs> Potentially, literally. <laughs> um, <laughs> so what are we going to do with the K-car? Um, so we're going to drive it around, 2,000 kilometers around North Tohoku. To Thousand kilometers and the in snow. In snow, yeah, and that's the bit that worries me actually. Yes, but has it got snow tires? I think so. I think it has. You think? Come and have a look. See what you think. Maybe you can work out. We've got all snow right, tires. All right, on. All right. And here she is, Ryotaro, the K car. What the hell is, is this? This is it, man. It's oh. tiny as hell. Look how <laughs> small this part is. Yeah. There's a barely an engine in it. I like it. I like Naski referred to it as a toy car. Yeah. On day one, and it does feel a bit like driving a toy. Like really, a it's like a mini, an old mini, not the one, like, like the one you were driving. It is a bit like an old yeah. mini. Yeah. Sure, yeah. driving is a challenge, but we do have a real challenge. Your challenge. So every day we're doing challenges sent in by you guys to make my life more difficult. We've had about seven thousand so far, and today's challenge is. Oh God. Oh, go down. Oh, there we go. There we go. Today's challenge is. What is it? What is it? <laughs> Forage for your own food. Forage for your own food. Yeah. Or like berries, wild berries. What do you want? What do you want from me? <laughs> I don't want to <laughs> rub it through a forest. I have no idea. <laughs> Give me that. How the hell are we going to do that? We're just going to the forest and find a bear. Go into the forest and find <laughs> a bear. I, I don't even know what to do with that, but what I do know is you're driving. Good luck. Am I? Yeah. All right, let's go. All right, let's go. And so, with today's challenge ahead of us and a sense of urgency to forage for food before the sun goes down, we set off post haste. Or at least we would have done if Rotto didn't take a bloody fortnight to get ready to drive. All right, let's see if you can drive this thing. Anytime, anytime you're there, Rotto. Let's go! I think you're not doing the whole trip. <laughs> 21 days, not 21 fucking years. Okay, there you go. All right. At last we're off, albeit not entirely sure where exactly the best place to forage for food is. Certainly it's not here in Fukushima's second biggest city. And so we make way for the mountains, where perhaps we can find a wild bear, a wild boar, anything, anything that might be likely to devour bloody Ryotaro. So, how's driving the Nissan Mocha? Is it good? It's a lot better than I expected. Really? <laughs> no, I, I thought like it's looking like it's a K car with an old K car, mm. thousand thousand dollars, right? It's like yeah, wobbling and you know like shaking everything. No, it's quite stable. It is stable. It's quite nice. It's quite nice handling actually. It is. Yeah. It is. And uh, you know, it's like a lot heavier. I mean, I'm I'm talking about good thing, right? The heavier handling and everything is really nice. Anything you don't like about it? But what I tried like put arm wrestle like with that and just. <laughs> so irritating, <laughs> isn't it? Uh, but and also back seat. That's all right. Not it's a bad. Bit of a mess back there. We, yeah, we yeah. don't look. We don't, back we, don't there. we don't talk about the back. Cuts <laughs> up boots. That uh, it's a bit small. It's very. Yeah, that's why we had to use the, the back seat for the 
it's a boot. Well, I'm glad. I'm glad you liked it. Glad we found you either. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty, pretty nice. I mean, we haven't really I like, don't go on the highway yet. That's when it gets a bit difficult. If it's wind on the first day we drove, it was very windy, and the yeah. car was like this. It's, oh, you're scaring me here. <laughs> You'll be <laughs> fine. You'll be fine. No way. Heading out of Koryama today, we discover our first of many obstacles. It's sodding cold. And as much as I would enjoy foraging for pine cones in freezing landscapes of Tohoku, we decide instead to let Ryotaro forage for food using slightly more modern methods, most notably by calling in a favour from a friend. Take a look at that. This is the level of snowfall we're dealing with here in Fukushima. Fukushima has a lot of microclimates. You come outside the city like Koryama, come to the mountains, and you get this. It's ridiculous. Luckily, we survived. Rotter is driving on the highway. Now he's on the phone, trying to find somewhere that we can forage Mate. for food. Mate! All right, if anyone can find it, it's him, right? All right, what you got? Find a restaurant. We can forage our food. Ooh, what kind of restaurant are we looking at? Secret. What do you mean, secret? Just tell me what it is. <laughs> And besides the restaurant, right? right? Besides that secret restaurant, we found a bar, right? Kind of Japanese snack bar, we call it. Snack bar? That we can visit later on tonight. Well, that sounds pretty good. Okay, where is the bar? Where's the restaurant? In Aizuakamatsu. We've, we've just come from there. We can't go around in circles all day. What? Journey go around Japan? Journey go around <laughs> Japan. There's a reason we don't let Ryota on these videos much. My God, all right. Just let's shut up and just get on. Back to Aizuakamatsu. This let's better go. be good. Let's on go. your shoulders. It's really good. It's really good. Promise you. Promise the world, it's good. Oh dear, from non-stop north to non-stop regret, we speed back down to Aizu Wakamatsu, having only just stayed there a few days prior. Luckily though, Ryotaro seems to have found a place where we can complete our challenge. Restaurant Ebiya, an unagi eel restaurant where you can quite literally grab your own dinner. これ毎朝届く。カツうなぎ生きた<笑> As the master san teaches us the secret to catching our eels, I can't help but notice the plaster on his finger, which doesn't particularly fill me with confidence, especially when I'm about to stick my hand into a pool of live animals. Make sure to pick head and tail at the same time. Oh! Ooh. It's so slippery. <laughs> it's so slippery. Slimy, slippery, and just generally unpleasant to be around, Ryotaro looks on as I attempt to catch his dinner, which soon proves to be a lot harder than it first appears. Oh, <laughs> oh my god. This is so weird. This is so weird. Yes! Yes! It disappears into a sea of eels. There you go. There you go. They're kind of cute. With foraging out of the way, we head upstairs as the eel is prepared. Traditionally, unagi is cooked in a style known as kabayaki whereby the eel is split down the back, skewered, and then meticulously grilled over charcoal, before being dipped multiple times in sweet tare sauce, made from soy sauce mirin, giving it a distinctive smoky flavor. Unagi in Japan is often seen as a luxurious meal for special occasions, with a typical set including rice costing upwards of three to 4,000 yen, dependent on the size of the eel. A rich, smoky, expertly crafted meal with an assortment of side dishes. I may have taken some liberties with interpreting this challenge. Don't look at me, it was Riotro's idea. Whoa! Wow! Well, that's big. <laughs> Huge! Good God. If this is foraging, I'm game for foraging more often. <laughs> but let's call it out. It's not foraging at all. No, at all. No. I think, just I think we failed like... this challenge. <laughs> <laughs> foraging with Riotro. <laughs> and I put foraging in quotation marks. At least Natsuki and I put the effort in when we have our challenges. The other day we had to find a celebrity. We couldn't find anyone, but we found a local cat who was famous. Like a cat with a hat on. Cat. Oh yeah, I know what you're talking about. But the cat yeah. had a fucking day off, so we could actually see the real cat. We had to take like, photos of a puppet. So, 
Yeah, the challenges Jennifer's found so far, I think we fa <laughs> we failed every single one. But if failure tastes this good, I'm fine with that. I'm fine with that. I think a lot of people come in Japan don't even think of unagi, right? As a British guy, when I came here first time, and people were like, oh, we eat eels. I was like, no, 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 no. Because in the UK, <laughs> jelly deals. Yes. Which are nothing short of an atrocity. Mm. Whereas this is one of the nicest meals you could have. Yes. Not cheap, though. Not cheap, not cheap. That's why Ryosho is paying today. <laughs> but unagi is one of my favourite dishes. Uh, what, what was mm. the name of your eel? Jennifer. Jennifer. Mm. Oh. What the fuck? <laughs> So, so weirdly specific. <laughs> I chose Enid because of alliteration. Mm. You just went, oh, Jennifer. What was, <laughs> who, who burned you? What, what ex-girlfriend hey, <laughs> do you hate? Stuff full of delicious eel and safe in the knowledge that I'll never hear the end of this damn challenge in the comments, because we probably failed it, we decide to head to our accommodation for tonight. So given we came all the way back to Aizuaka Matsu, we were able to hastily book this Ryokan. Okawaso Hotel? Okawaso. Ashino, Okawaso means big river. They're right next to a big river. And uh, yeah, this is a, it's a most incredible lobby there. You come in and it's like four stories and you peer down and you get this amazing shamisen player in like a boxing ring, no less. Huh? And you would play a chess on that, right? I would. Chess boxing. <laughs> Relive the magic of last year's flashback. disaster. But uh, we're going to freshen up and then we're going to head off to snack bars, right? Yes, yes, snack bar hopping. Snack bar hopping. Yeah. Let's go. Ooh, very nice. Very nice indeed. There's not that many people who can spontaneously ring up an eel restaurant and be like, oh, sorry, can we come and just, just film it and just pick up the eels and just take them out of the water tank? <laughs> Only Ryotaro can do that. Only he has that magical gift, that power. Uh, nobody knows North Japan better than he does. And it has been quite refreshing, I hate to admit it, refreshing to uh, catch up and see the man himself after uh, the last few months. Ever since moving to Tokyo, we haven't really got to catch up. So it's been nice. And um, for me, just being back here in Fukushima, even though we were in Aizu Wakamatsu in this area just two days ago, it's nice to be back here. I used to love this area, particularly Ashinomaki Onsen. I came here a couple of times years ago, and it really is beautiful with the river and the mountains and the kind of snow, especially this time of year. Uh, a reminder for me, kind of a nostalgic reminder of how much I loved living in North Japan. And as much as I've been kind of grateful to, to live in Tokyo. To return to this area, it's been really nice and just refreshing. Uh, although I will admit, I do feel somewhat disheveled. Five, six days on the road have taken their toll a little bit. And I think we've done a good job concealing how kind of tough it has been filming. Um, but testament to the amazing crew that we've got working on this around the clock, editing right now as we speak. But enough nostalgia, enough reminiscing. It's time to go and see if these snack bars are as good as Ryoto has made them out to be. While you may have heard of a typical Japanese izakaya style pub, snack bars are a slightly different breed of bar. Typically very small and cosy, with loyal regulars, snack bars are often usually run by one or two people. The idea of a snack bar is meant to be more of an intimate bar experience, where you generally go to chat with the owner as you sit and drink. The bar we're visiting tonight, however, is a little different. Joined by our host Ryotaro and his friend Koji, we head to bar Hanahigashiyama, a snack bar where your host for the evening is a geisha. Historically reserved as entertainment for the upper classes of Japan, predominantly at social gatherings or tea halls, geisha literally means a person who performs. It can take up to six years to become a fully-fledged geisha and receive the traditional black wig as a sign of graduation, as worn tonight by our cordial host Fuyuka-san. Now with the scarring image of Geisha Ryotaro seared forever into my mind, it's time to enjoy the best part of being at a snack bar, namely the drinking and of course the snacks. Given this is Koji San's regular snack bar, we have a drink with his name here. So you kind of come in and rather than buy a drink, you buy a bottle. And uh, then whenever you come back, your bottle's on the shelf, you come in, 
and you can drink all the Remy Martin your heart desires. Exactly. All the cognac, all the whiskey. And, and what happens is that, like, let's say that your friend has got a bottle in the shelf, right? You yeah. can actually like, tell his name and then get his <laughs> thing out and then drink. And if you don't drink like Riotro, you can have a bottle of orange juice on the <laughs> shelf. So, yeah, the sky's the limit. As you can see, we have an array of snacks, including grape chocolate, Russian calpas, cheese crack assembly, and the teeny tiny bag of nuts. And they're all going fast, so eat them quick before Riotro eats them all. And it's not just the nuts the locals come back for. Fuyuka-san and the other geisha will also perform their traditional geisha dance, but only first if you sing karaoke. So Fuyuka-san can only dance to certain songs that she kind of knows the words to and the sort of way to dance. The song is Come a Chameleon by Culture Club. It's the only song. Quite nostalgic coming back to a snack bar. When I used to live in Sakata in Yamagata, I would go like once or twice a week because that's kind of all there was to do. But it was a nice atmosphere. You go in, there's no windows, snack bars are very sort of enclosed. You've got the smell of like smoke and perfume drifting through the air, the smell of whiskey and sake. So yeah, coming back here, especially in winter, it's really cozy. It's quite nostalgic and kind of nice. I see the appeal. And now I don't see the appeal. What? What a cool evening, meeting a geisha. I know. Never done that on Amazing. a board Amazing. I never knew that there was just a place in Aizawa Kamatsu. Yeah, when you think geisha, you just think, oh, Kyoto. No, so exactly. The fact that's still happening outside Kyoto is a pretty cool thing, right? Yeah. But uh, well done, Ryotaro. You pulled today out of the hat. You did a good job. Yeah. It's, it's good stuff. What's I'm Koji? Actually, He's Koji. still up there, yeah. right? <laughs> Ryotaro's friend, Koji, he was like, I'm, I'm just going to stay here and have another drink. We sort of left him. Um, I'm shattered. I think you're pretty tired, I'll be too. Me too, I'll be too. Sorry. And tomorrow, we continue our journey across Japan as we mm. go to Ryotaro. Rose house. Like, you bought our new house, right? Yeah, new, like, uh, yeah, house, yeah. Hol holiday home. Holiday of home. Of course, we're going to check that out. But thank you guys for watching, as always. We'll see you tomorrow for another episode of Journey Across Japan, Non Stop North. Bye for now. Let's go. It's crispy outside and it's like soft on the bottom. This is the ultimate lethal weapon. That's, that's hot spring water. That's hot spring water. How the hell do you get that? Well, there's a pipe. <laughs> <laughs>